Thomas Pynchon from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, http colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. Thomas Ruggles Pynchon Jr., born May 8, 1937, is an American writer based in New York City. He is noted for his dense and complex fictions. Born in Long Island, Pynchon spent two years in the United States Navy and earned an English degree from Cornell University. After publishing several short stories in the late 1950s, he began composing the novels for which he is best known today, V, 1963, The Crying of Lot 49, 1966, Gravity's Rainbow, 1973, Vineland, 1990, and Mason and Dixon, 1997. Pynchon is widely acclaimed as among the finest of contemporary authors. He is a MacArthur Fellow and a recipient of the National Book Award, and is regularly cited as a contender for the Nobel Prize in Literature. Both in his fiction and nonfiction, his writing encompasses a vast array of subject matter, styles, and themes, including, but not limited to, the fields of history, science, and mathematics. Pynchon is also known for his avoidance of publicity. Very few photographs of him have ever been published and rumors about his location and identity have circulated since the 1960s. Section 1. Biography. Thomas Pynchon was born in 1937 in Glen Cove, Long Island, New York, to Thomas Ruggles Pynchon Sr. and Catherine Frances Bennett Pynchon. His earliest American ancestor, William Pynchon, emigrated to the Massachusetts Bay Colony with the Winthrop Fleet in 1630, and thereafter a long line of Pynchon descendants found wealth and repute on American soil. Pynchon's family background and aspects of his ancestry have provided source material for his fictions, particularly in the Slothrop family histories related in The Secret Integration, 1964, and Gravity's Rainbow. Childhood and Education Pynchon attended Oyster Bay High School, where he wrote for the school newspaper and excelled in his studies. After graduating in 1953, he studied engineering physics at Cornell University, but left at the end of his second year to serve in the U.S. Navy. In 1957, Pynchon returned to Cornell to pursue a degree in English. His first published story, The Small Rain, appeared in the Cornell Writer in May 1959 and narrates an actual experience of a friend who had served in the Army. Subsequently, however, episodes and characters throughout Pynchon's fiction draw freely upon his own experiences in the Navy. While at Cornell, Pynchon became a close friend of Richard Farina, and both briefly led what Pynchon has called a micro-cult around Oakley Hall's 1958 novel, Warlock. He later reminisced about his college days in the introduction he wrote in 1983 for Farina's novel, Been Down So Long It Looks Like Up To Me, first published in 1966. Pynchon also reportedly attended lectures given by Vladimir Nabokov, who then taught literature at Cornell. Although Nabokov later said that he had no memory of Pynchon, other of Pynchon's lecturers at Cornell recall him as being a gifted and exceptional student. Pynchon received his B.A. in June 1959. Early Career After leaving Cornell, Pynchon began to work on his first novel. From February 1960 to September 1962, he was employed as a technical writer at Boeing in Seattle, where he compiled safety articles for the Beaumark Service News, a support newsletter for the Beaumark surface-to-air missile deployed by the U.S. Air Force. Pynchon's experiences at Boeing inspired his depictions of the Yo-Yo Dine Corporation in V and The Crying of Lot 49, and both his background in physics and the technical journalism he undertook at Boeing provided much raw material for Gravity's Rainbow. When it was published in 1963, Pynchon's novel V won a William Faulkner Foundation Award for Best First Novel of the Year. After resigning from Boeing, Pynchon spent time in New York and Mexico before moving to California, where he was reportedly based for much of the 1960s and early 1970s, most notably in an apartment in Manhattan Beach. In 1964, his application to study mathematics as a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley, was turned down. In 1966, he wrote a first-hand report on the aftermath and legacy of the Watts Riots in Los Angeles. Entitled, A Journey into the Mind of Watts, the article was published in the New York Times Magazine. Pynchon's second novel, The Crying of Lot 49, is also set in California. It was published in 1966 and won the Richard and Hilda Rosenthal Foundation Award. Although it is more concise and linear in its structure than Pynchon's other novels, its labyrinthine plot features an ancient underground mail service known as the Tristero, 
a parody of a Jacobean revenge drama entitled The Courier's Tragedy, and a corporate conspiracy involving the bones of World War II American GIs being used as charcoal cigarette filters. It proposes a series of seemingly incredible interconnections between these and other similarly bizarre revelations that confront the novel's protagonist, Oedipa Moss. Like V, the novel contains a wealth of references to science and technology and to obscure historical events, and both books dwell upon the detritus of American society and culture. The Crying of Lot 49 also continues Pynchon's habit of composing parodic song lyrics and punning names, and referencing aspects of popular culture within his prose narrative. In particular, it incorporates several allusions to Nabokov's Lolita. Gravity's Rainbow and Pynchon's Rise to Prominence Pynchon's most celebrated novel is his third, Gravity's Rainbow, published in 1973. An incredibly intricate and elusive fiction, which combines and elaborates on many of the themes of his earlier work, including preterition, paranoia, racism, colonialism, conspiracy, synchronicity, and entropy, the novel has spawned a wealth of commentary and critical material, including two reader's guides, books and scholarly articles, online concordances and discussions, and artworks, and is regarded as one of the archetypal texts of American literary postmodernism. The major portion of Gravity's Rainbow takes place in London and Europe in the final months of the Second World War and the weeks immediately following VE Day, and is narrated for the most part from within the historical moment in which it is set. In this way, Pynchon's text enacts a type of dramatic irony, whereby neither the characters nor the various narrative voices are aware of specific historical circumstances, such as the Holocaust, which are, however, very much to the forefront of the reader's understanding of this time in history. Such an approach generates dynamic tension and moments of acute self-consciousness, as both reader and author seem drawn even deeper into the plot in various senses of that term. Encyclopedic in scope, the novel also displays enormous erudition in its treatment of an array of material drawn from the fields of psychology, chemistry, mathematics, history, religion, music, literature, and film. Perhaps appropriately for a book so suffused with engineering knowledge, Pynchon reputedly wrote the first draft of Gravity's Rainbow in longhand on engineer's graph paper in California and Mexico City. Gravity's Rainbow was a joint winner of the 1974 National Book Award for Fiction, along with Isaac Bashevis Singer's A Crown of Feathers and other stories. In the same year, the fiction jury unanimously recommended Gravity's Rainbow for the Pulitzer Prize. However, the full Pulitzer panel vetoed the decision, describing the novel as unreadable, turgid, overwritten, and in parts, obscene. The jurors refused to amend their recommendation, and as a result, no fiction prize was awarded that year. In 1975, Pynchon declined the William Dean Howells Medal of the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Post-Gravity's Rainbow A collection of Pynchon's early short stories, entitled Slow Learner, was published in 1984 with a lengthy autobiographical introduction. Pynchon's fourth novel, Vineland, was published in 1990 and was regarded as a disappointment by the majority of reviewers and critics. The novel is set in California in the 1980s and 1960s and describes the relationship between an FBI COINTELPRO agent and a female radical filmmaker. Its strong socio-political undercurrents detail the constant battle between authoritarianism and communalism and the nexus between resistance and complicity, but with a typically Pynchonian sense of humor. In 1988, he received a MacArthur Fellowship, and, since the early 1990s at least, many observers have mentioned Pynchon as a Nobel Prize contender. Renowned American literary critic Harold Bloom has named him as one of the four major American novelists of his time, along with Don DeLillo, Philip Roth, and Cormac McCarthy. Pynchon's most recent novel is Mason and Dixon, a work which had been in the pipeline since 1978 at least. Published in 1997, the meticulously researched novel is a sprawling postmodernist saga recounting the lives and careers of the English astronomer Charles Mason and his partner, the surveyor Jeremiah Dixon, and the birth of the American Republic. While it received some negative reviews, the great majority of commentators acknowledged it as a welcome return to form. It has been rumored that Pynchon's next book will be about the life and loves of Sofia Kovalevskaya, whom he allegedly studied in Germany. The former German Minister of Culture, Michael Naumann, has stated that he assisted Pynchon in his research about, quote, 
a Russian mathematician who studied for David Hilbert in Göttingen, end quote. No reliable information about the novel's date of publication has so far been forthcoming. Section 2. Themes and Influence Along with its emphasis on loftier items such as racism, imperialism, and religion, and its cognizance and appropriation of many elements of traditional high culture and literary form, Pidgeon's work also demonstrates a strong affinity with the practitioners and artifacts of low culture, including comic books and cartoons, pulp fiction, popular films, television programs, cookery, urban myths, conspiracy theories, and folk art. This blurring of the conventional boundary between high and low culture, sometimes interpreted as a deconstruction, is seen as one of the defining characteristics of postmodernism. In particular, Pynchon has revealed himself in his fiction and nonfiction as an aficionado of popular music. Song lyrics and mock musical numbers appear in each of his novels, and in his autobiographical introduction to the Slow Learner collection of early stories, he reveals a fondness for both jazz and rock and roll. The character McClintic Sphere in V is a fictional composite of jazz legends such as Ornette Coleman, Charlie Parker, and Thelonious Monk. In The Crying of Lot 49, the lead singer of The Paranoids sports a beetle haircut and sings with an English accent. In the closing pages of Gravity's Rainbow, there is an apocryphal report that Tyrone Slothrop, the novel's protagonist, played kazoo and harmonica as a guest musician on a record released by The Fool in the 1960s. In Vineland, both Zoid Wheeler and Isaiah Tufor are musicians. Zoid played keyboards in a 60s surf band called the Corvairs, while Isaiah plays in a punk band called Billy Barf and the Vomitones. In Mason and Dixon, one of the characters plays on the clavier the varsity drinking song, which will later become the Star Spangled Banner. In his slow learner introduction, Pynchon also acknowledges a debt to Spike Jones. Later, Pynchon penned the liner notes for Spiked, a collection of Jones's music. He also wrote the liner notes for Nobody's Cool, the second album of indie rock band Lotion, in which he states that, quote, Rock and roll remains one of the last honorable callings, and a working band is a miracle of everyday life, which is basically what these guys do, end quote. He is also known to be a fan of Rokey Erickson. Investigations and digressions into the realms of human sexuality, psychology, sociology, mathematics, science, and technology also recur throughout Pynchon's works. One of his earliest short stories, Lowlands, 1960, features a meditation on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle as a metaphor for telling stories about one's own experiences. His next published work, Entropy, 1960, introduced the concept which was to become synonymous with Pynchon's name, though Pynchon later admitted the, quote, shallowness of his understanding, end quote, of the subject, and noted that choosing an abstract concept first and trying to construct a narrative around it was, quote, a lousy way to go about writing a story, end quote. Another early story, Under the Rose, 1961, includes amongst its cast of characters a cyborg set anachronistically in Victorian-era Egypt, a type of writing now called steampunk. This story, significantly reworked by Pynchon, appears as Chapter 3 of V. The Secret Integration, 1964, Pynchon's last published story, is a sensitively handled coming-of-age tale in which a group of young boys face the consequences of the American policy of racial immigration. At one point in the story, the boys attempt to understand the new policy by way of the mathematical operation, the only sense of the word with which they are familiar. The Crying of Lot 49 also alludes to entropy and communication theory, and contains scenes and descriptions which parody or appropriate calculus, Zeno's paradoxes, and the thought experiment known as Maxwell's Demon. At the same time, the novel also investigates homosexuality, celibacy, and both medically sanctioned and illicit psychedelic drug use. Gravity's Rainbow describes many varieties of sexual fetishism, including sadomasochism, coprophilia, and a borderline case of tentacle rape, and features numerous episodes of drug use, most notably marijuana, but also cocaine, naturally occurring hallucinogens, and the mushroom Amanita muscaria. Gravity's Rainbow also derives much from Pynchon's background in mathematics. At one point, the geometry of garter belts is compared with that of cathedral spires, also described as mathematical singularities. His most recent novel, Mason and Dixon, 
explores the scientific, theological, and sociocultural foundations of the Age of Reason, whilst also depicting the relationships between actual historical figures and fictional characters in intricate detail, and, like Gravity's Rainbow, is an archetypal example of the genre of historiographical metafiction. Pynchon's work has been cited as an influence and inspiration by many writers, musicians, artists, and filmmakers, including T.C. Boyle, Don DeLillo, William Gibson, Elfried Yelinek, Rick Moody, Richard Powers, Salman Rushdie, Neil Stephenson, Laurie Anderson, Zach Smith, and Adam Rapp. Thanks to his influence on Gibson and Stephenson in particular, Pynchon became one of the progenitors of cyberpunk fiction. Though the term cyberpunk did not become prevalent until the early 1980s, many readers retroactively include Gravity's Rainbow in the genre, along with other works, for example Samuel R. Delaney's Nova and many works of Philip K. Dick, which seem after the fact to anticipate cyberpunk styles and themes. The encyclopedic nature of Pynchon's novels also led to some attempts to link his work with the short-lived hypertext fiction movement of the 1990s. Gravity's Rainbow and the more recent Mason and Dixon both feature wildly eccentric characters, episodes of frenzied action, and frequent digressions on topics which are seemingly tangential to the central narrative. These characteristics, combined with the novel's imposing lengths, have led critic James Wood to classify Pynchon's work as hysterical realism. Other writers whose work has been labeled as hysterical realism include Rushdie, Stephenson, and Zadie Smith. This recording continued on part two.